We miss you. That was good. From this church family to our church family. We, we miss, miss you guys. Hey, fellowship. We love y'all. We miss y'all. Good morning, fellowship. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Your pajamas look great. We miss all of y'all, and we can't wait until we get to see everybody again at church. We miss everybody. Hi. Hi. We miss, miss everyone. Yeah, we miss everybody at church. Can't wait to get back. Hey, fellowship family. We love you and miss you. Hey, guys. We're praying for you, and we can't wait to see you guys as soon as we're allowed to see you guys. Hey, everyone. Love and miss you guys. We're praying for everybody, and we hope to see you guys soon. Hey, Fellowship family, it's us, the Hoggards. We just want to uh, say hello, let you know that we miss you. We cannot wait to get with you again soon. Uh, I know it won't be long, and we are so, so ready. Love you guys. Good morning, let's worship together. We're going to see a victory. The weapon that's form will not prosper. Let's sing this together. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I know knows only how to triumph My God will never fail My God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory I'm gonna see a victory For the battle belongs to you There's 
power in the mighty name. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. I'm not backing down from any giant.
your face shine upon be near oh God your nearness is our, to us our good Sing these words from Numbers to say, the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Sing that again. The Lord bless you and keep you Make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you, Lord, turn his face toward you, and give you peace. Amen. Amen. up this song and he is faithful to the end to deliver You just where you are, just take a moment just to take a deep breath. I know there's kids running around. I know there's chaos in your schedule. 
I know that there's a lot of fear in our world. But take a moment as best you can in the midst of the noise to rest, to take a deep breath and hear these words and know that God is with you, that he smiles upon you, and that he offers you his peace. You just hear these words where you are. Be near, oh God, be near, oh God of us, your nearness is to us, our good. Be near, oh God, be near, oh God of us, your nearness is to us, our good. Let's sing one more time. Oh, be near, be near, oh God, be near, oh God of us, your nearness is to us. Our good, oh, we ask for you, be near, oh God, be near, oh God, your nearness is to us, our good, yes, it's our good, you are good, so good. Oh, may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children. May his favor, may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children. May his presence go. This is how far it goes. And your presence go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you in your joy, in your rejoicing, in your sorrow, in your leaving, in your coming, and your going, in your weeping, in rejoicing. He is with you, He is for you. mercies are new every morning. Every morning. His mercies are new every morning. Yes, they are. Day after day. His mercies are new every morning. No matter where I am or what I do, yes, His mercy, His mercies are every morning. Yes, His mercies are new. His mercies are new every morning. Oh, Jesus, we thank you that your mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. We thank you for your nearness. We thank you that it's, for us, it's our good. 
that like a tree can't survive without water and sunshine, that you are the water and the light to our souls. That when we have that, we can thrive in any circumstance. So Jesus wants you, won't you just impress upon the hearts of those watching right now that what they feel just being filled up with living water. Won't they feel the light that at the beginning of creation was there on their hearts? Won't you do a work among us today? A work deeper than our circumstance, deeper than a pandemic, deeper than a, a change of schedule, deeper than, than loss and grief. Won't you move in our souls. Jesus, we love you. We ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Um, just great um, just to be here this morning. Um, I was so encouraged um, seeing your faces in that bumper video at the beginning. Um, I hope that encouraged you. We're going to continue to do that. So if you would like to be a part of that, um, you can just reach out and comment on this feed and say, hey, I'd love, to, uh, I'd love for somebody to come video uh, me or my family. Uh, we would love to do that this week. And put faces um, on the stream as much as we can to remind each other um, that we're one together and that we're here and that we haven't gone away, but that we are serving and we're ministering together from a distance. Um, so welcome to fellowship. Uh, I'd like to ask you, if this is your first time, uh, here's kind of how we, we do things this morning. I encourage you to comment on the thread below. I encourage you to text your friends and check in. Use this as a time um, not to just retreat and consume content, but to connect with people. Um, there are people watching this together, and I encourage you to just comment on the stream and connect and say hey. Uh, it's just really encouraging to a lot of people. There's probably somebody out there that would love to be encouraged and would need to be encouraged by you. If you think of something that's encouraging to you uh, during this gathering and you think, oh, wow, that's really good. God's really speaking to me in this. I encourage you, comment on the, on the stream with that because there's people out there that would love to hear that and be encouraged as well. We're going to take a time to do that. We're going to pass the peace of God that we have to one another um, through this virtual means. So I encourage you, comment on the stream right now in these next few minutes. Send a text, call somebody, connect with somebody you haven't heard from, and let's pass the peace of God together. And let's do that right now. Virtual greetings and virtual high fives all around. Thank you for joining us this morning. Um, each and every week that we do this, there is just a, a deeper longing in my heart. Uh, there's just a, a longing to be together. And um, just this morning, though, I, I'm comforted by the fact that God is absolutely doing something wonderful and beautiful in this season. And uh, this week I've really been grasping with what does it mean to have some language to process some of the things that we're going through together as a church. And maybe the language that has resonated the most deeply with me during the midst of this pandemic and all of the changes that have gone on, 
uh, is the wilderness language. This morning we're going to look at Numbers chapter 6, and the book of Numbers was originally called In the Wilderness. So this is a, a book for people that are going through the wilderness. And um, the wilderness is a place where uncertainty is the norm, and it's where all of the normal points of reference, the things that we take stock of, begin to shift and change. And probably the reason that this season seems so long is because all of our normal points of reference during time have changed. I mean, um, sports and movies and graduations and church gatherings, all of those things um, have been canceled, and even the, the work and the home balance has drastically been flipped on its head upside down. Um, many of us change out of our work PJs into our nighttime PJs and just call it a day. Um, but in all of this, we believe that God is deeply at work. And when we lose all points of reference, and some of us, we're asking this question as it begins to look like things may begin to open up a little bit in our area. How do we begin to go forward in these seasons when things are uncertain? Well, the good news about wilderness seasons is that not only is it a place of uncertainty, but it also is a place where we encounter both the promises and the provision and the power and the goodness and the grace of God. That's what we discover in the wilderness. In the wilderness, we're moved from just our own weakness and our own self-limitations to the absolute love and power and the mercy and the grace of God. That's where the narrative shifts away from our own story to us getting caught up into the story story of God. And in Numbers chapter 6, we're going to look at uh, the, the verses that we just sang together as a church. And what we encounter is that the people of God are in this time of transition where they know that they can't go backwards towards the nation of Egypt and they've got the promise land on this side of them and they're in this season of transition and they don't know how to go forward. And what we're going to learn is that the one who goes before us is infinitely more important than where we're going. That we can go forward in wilderness seasons not knowing what the future holds because honestly, like you can listen to every expert that you want on the internet. You can listen to every CDC report. But the truth is no one knows what's going to happen a week from now. No one knows what's going to happen a month from now. But what we do have this great confidence is that God goes with us and that God is the one that goes before us. And that's way more important than when, where we are going. So if you would join with me, we're going to read Numbers chapter 6. I'm going to read verses 22 to 27. And this is, this is a word that God speaks to His people. Many of us have probably grown in the discipline of prayer and just desire to connect with God. But this is God's heart, Him speaking to us and Him speaking over us. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to Aaron and his sons saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, and this is the blessing, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put My name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. This is the word of the Lord. Let's pray. Father, so much we want our minds to be shaped by truth more than our feelings. We want our lives to be shaped more by the reality of who you are than any news report. As we constantly are moving from thing to thing, I pray that you would help us to find our anchor and our hope and our trust in who you are I pray that you would meet each of us exactly where we are. I pray that you would break through the chaos, you would break through the confusion, and you would help us to grow as we encounter you. I pray that you would cause your face to shine upon your people in this moment. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I love this blessing for a number of reasons. I think I first came upon it uh, even when I wasn't a Christian watching the movie Braveheart. I mean, there's just some poetic, lyrical, um, just delivery of this blessing and this prayer. Um, but 
what I love most about it is that it's something that's outside of us. It's not something that we earn. It's not something that we merit. It's something that God speaks over his people, not because they've done anything good or not because they've done anything bad, just out of his sure, sheer desire to bless them. And um, that brings me to my first point that we're going to look at this morning. God's blessing forms the framework for understanding our lives. God's blessing forms the framework for our lives. Look at verse 24 with me. The Lord bless you and keep you. Blessing is the framework of this entire prayer, but it also is the framework for our entire lives. If we were going to understand what it means to be the people of God, it means that we are blessed and kept by God. That is who we are as his people, and that defines who God is. And his blessings form the framework for understanding how we process life. And so my prayer as I've been preparing this week is that, that God would begin to take the thoughts that we have captive and put them through the filter of what it means to be blessed and kept by him. That everywhere that we go, we are constrained by his blessing. Now, I've had the privilege of probably teaching two kids to drive at this point, and that is an absolute... Um, <laughs> faith-giving exercise in and of itself. And um, I gave the same sage advice to my children as that which I inc- encountered, which was basically to keep it in between the ditches, right? And so um, when my kids first started driving out, I mean, it was basically like they were weaving from one side to the other. And I said, that's okay. I mean, these are the guardrails that you have. I even remember going and um, continuing to go forward in the midst of teaching them to drive and going over bridges. And I would see where people had hit the guardrails. And I was like, listen, that's, that's to keep you from falling off the edge. And it's the same way with bless, the blessings of God. It is the framework which guards our life. It keeps us from going off in the ditches when our fears rise up, when our uncertainties come to the surface, when all of the anxieties begin to come in. What we have to do is take those thoughts captive and filter through them through the framework that God promises to bless us and keep us. God has always dealt with his people in blessing. Even from the first moment that he called Abraham, he said, I'm going to bless you so that you would be a blessing to the nations. Then one of his descendants, Jacob, who was an absolute scoundrel, dressed up so that he could actually steal the blessing from his brother Esau, And he took the blessing, and when Esau heard that Jacob had received that blessing, he was absolutely devastated. And he said, don't you have another blessing for me? And that's because blessing is more than just this idea of pleasant thoughts to shape your day. No, blessing is the covenantal framework with which God works and deals with his people. It's a permanent address where he promises to keep us and he promises to guard our life with his blessing. Listen to this from William Brown. He says, God's intention and desire to bless humanity is a central focus of his covenant relationships. For this reason, the concept of blessing pervades the biblical record. Two distinct ideas are present. First, a blessing was a public decoration of a favored status. So when we receive the blessing of God, that means we are favored. Second, the blessing endowed power for prosperity and success. In all cases, the blessing served as a guide and a motivation to pursue a course of life within that blessing. So being blessed means that we are favored by God. That he promises to pour out his blessing upon us. But it's more than that. He actually gives us the power to walk in that identity of being the blessed people of God. And that's very important for us because what we experience does not always feel like blessing. Right? The wilderness does not feel naturally like it's a place that we're going to encounter the blessing of God. But it's where we begin to understand who he is and how he keeps us. And really, God's commitment is to always give us and do good for us. Listen to Galatians chapter 3. We're going to look at verses 13 and 14. It says, Christ redeemed us 
from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised Spirit through faith. So the reason that we can have absolute assurance that we will receive the blessing of God is because Jesus Christ became a curse for us. He took all of our sin and all of our shame and all of our disobedience on himself so that all that's left for us is God's blessing. And so as we walk through this pandemic and as we walk through the uncertainty of what the future holds, we get this promise that Jesus Christ became a curse for us so that we are the recipient of his blessing. And that's, that's the framework that God wants us to have in this season. Blessing literally means to kneel down. So listen to this from William Brown. He says, The Old Testament terms for blessing abound in the Old Testament, occurring over 600 times. The major terms are related to the word meaning to kneel. Since in earlier times... One would kneel to receive a blessing. And so what these words literally mean is the Lord bow down or the Lord kneel to bless you, right? So the picture or the imagery is of a father coming down and giving a gift to his children. And so I think a helpful practice for us in this season would be just to take the posture of our bodies and to kneel before God and say, let me receive the blessing of this season. Listen, now, not everything that you're going to go through is, is going to seem like a blessing, but God wants to mold us and shape us in this season. He wants us to understand that He will bless us and that He will keep us. For some of us, that gift will be a deeper level of intimacy than we've ever known as we are absolutely dependent on Him. For some people, that gift is going to be hearing his voice and hearing it sharper and clearer than the voice of the enemy. For some of us, it's going to be a faith and a resolve that causes us to endure. I believe with absolute certainty that God is raising up new leaders inside of his church that aren't soft, that aren't just used to living for their comfort, but he's absolutely making us able to persevere for the long haul. And I also, I mean, and, and I had this impression even as um, the, the band was singing this morning, this is going to be a defining moment for families. This is going to shape families for generations to come. And we have this opportunity to teach them that although things aren't the way that we would want them to be, that God is absolutely at work in the midst of this. And so when we kneel down to receive these gifts from God, it's an act of surrender. And it's saying, my life belongs to you. You are the one that guards my life with your presence. That brings me to my next point. God's presence is our provision in wilderness seasons. Look at verses 25 and 26. And what comes into view is the face of God. Verse 25. The Lord make His face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Verse 26. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. So both of those verses have the Lord's face or the Lord's countenance. And that's synonymous with his presence. That's who God is. God's face is the fact that God wants to make himself known to us in this season. The good news of this season is that God's not hiding. He's inviting us to experience not just some abstract notions about who he is, but he promises to be with us through his presence. Now, I'm at that point of life where my kids have better technology than I do. So I've heard this rumor that there are iPhones out there that actually recognize your face. I don't know, mine's cracked in the screen and I can barely open it. But my kids, I mean, they, they basically, all they have to do is hold their phone up to their face and it recognizes who they are, right? And it opens them up. Why? 
Because I, your face is synonymous with your identity and it gives you access to all that you own. And God is basically saying, I want you in these wilderness seasons to know and discern and be able to recognize my face and to be able to recognize my presence above all of the things that are going on in the noise and the chaos of the world. I'm training my people in the midst of the wilderness to discern my face. And he says, I want to make my face shine upon you, right? And that, that echoes 2 Corinthians chapter 4 where we see the glory of God in the face of Jesus. And as we look to Him, we begin to reflect that glory out to the world who is looking for hope and looking for faith. They're looking for a way to find hope in the midst of uncertainty. And that's especially important as we walk through these wilderness seasons. Now, if you are reading this, I think, on just through your quiet time or you're going through the Bible in a year, I mean, Numbers chapter 6 seems like this strange place for this blessing because chapters 1 through 6 are basically this list of all the things that the priests need to do before they can actually minister to God. But basically what God is saying in Numbers chapter 6, the priests have gone to all of these links and I've removed every obstacle so that you can know and experience my presence. I want you to draw near. Listen to this from Joe Stoll. He says, The blessing assured the people of God's care and protection. The descriptive images of the Lord's face were particularly powerful. The picture of his face beaming upon Israel shows that God takes pleasure in them. It's the promise of his grace that he will care for them, not because he merely tolerates them, but because he absolutely loves them. And the fact that he can turn his face towards them is the sign of a peaceful relationship. And so I want you just in this moment, wherever you are, if you can, just to close your eyes and see if you can picture God's face. What does it look like to you right now? Is he angry? Is he disappointed? Is he stoic and deaf to your cries? Or is he beaming with delight? Numbers chapter 6 when it says he wants to make his countenance shine upon us literally means he wants us to know his smile. It's the smile and delight of a father over his children. And knowing the smile of God, and this is my last point, produces peace and flourishing. And so if there are areas in our life that don't seem to be flourishing or experiencing peace, God gives us the antidote. He says, I want you to know my smile. Most of us, if we're honest, when we contemplate the face of God, he's either far off or distant or disappointed. And God's saying, you can come near because I'm a father that has delight in my children. The word here is the word shalom. It means flourishing. So your relationships can flourish under the smile of God. Your vocation can, can flourish under the smile of God. Everything that you go through can come through this filter that God's smiling upon us. And I'm just going to close with this story from Steve Brown. It's one of my favorites. He would tell this story about his daughter. Uh, His daughter signed up for an advanced English class when she was in about the ninth grade. And she was a great student, but she was absolutely terrified when she began to read the syllabus. And she wanted to drop out. And so she asked her dad, and he was a softy just like I am, and He went down to the school with his daughter and he said, hey, you're going to have to let my daughter out of this class. It's too difficult for her. And the teacher who had been teaching for a number of years could kind of figure out what was going on. And she said, well, would you stay in the class if I promised that I would give you an A no matter what you do? And the kid's no dummy. So she's like, well, yeah, sure, I'll take the class if you promise to give me an A. And basically what that teacher did was take the pressure off of performance and say, listen, you have an A no matter what, that you, do, no matter what you do, and you're going to be able to succeed. And she got an A all by herself in the midst of that class. And that's the gospel good news for us as the people of God. Whether you feel like you've been uber successful and you've been able to, you know, 
clock a marathon during this pandemic and, you know, or if you feel like, man, I'm just barely hanging on day by day. The truth is you already have an A. You have the spotless record of Jesus Christ who went into the wilderness, fought our battles on our behalf, resisted Satan to the point of shedding his own blood so that we get to experience the smile of God. And that's what God wants to do in this season is bring his smile to bear on who we are. And so I just want to close by praying for us. Uh, And especially I want to pray for those um, who may have never experienced God's smile. Or it's been a while since you've sensed the Father's delight. There may be people that are watching right now that that want to begin a relationship with Jesus. I'm going to pray and help lead you in a prayer so that you might encounter Jesus. And maybe you're here and you're just stirred that maybe the God that you've just heard about is different from the God that you grew up with and you want to begin a relationship with Him. He's inviting us all right now to know His smile. So let's pray. Father, I pray right now for those that would want to begin a relationship with You, that You help them to look And behold the face of Jesus who is the face of love and mercy. And I pray that you would bring them into a place where they can turn their life, control of their life over to who you are. And they simply trust you, that you love them, not because they're good, not because they're perfect, but because they're loved and they're your people. So I pray that you would give people the gift of faith and repentance now. For those that want to begin a new relationship with you again, I pray um, that you would help them turn away from all of the distractions and, and lock eyes with you and encounter your smile. Um, For those that are distracted during this season, I pray that the most prominent thing that we see is your pleasure and your delight in us as your people, that we would be a people of your presence. We love and we delight in you, and we thank you that we can continue to encounter you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. That was a very powerful image to me Um, and as I closed my eyes to see how the face of God would appear to me I have traditionally in my life uh, seen disappointment uh, and uh, that I wasn't making the A in life that I so craved to make Um, but today when I closed my eyes immediately I saw Um, the face of God like a father just right here and he was holding my face in his hands and smiling just like when I hold my little one's faces in my hands and smile at them and kiss them on the forehead Um, and it was just very powerful and so I I hope that you um, participated in that Um, and I'm going to give you a second as I'm uh, preparing uh, for this just to close your eyes if you didn't before and let him hold your face in his hands Um, If you haven't already prepared your elements for communion, um, I'll give you a second to do that. I encourage you to go ahead and begin having a piece of bread or a cracker, something that can be um, easily broken and shared, um, and a cup. Um, Prepare that as you're preparing for the service, as you're logging in. Um, I think that there's a chance there to think about preparing to receive the bread of life preparing to receive the the living word and the new wine of the spirit. Um, It's not a rule. It's just a suggestion. So you're not making a last minute dash for goldfish crackers like usually happens at my house. Um, But I'd like to read a passage that has come to change my definition of what it means to experience the presence of God. And I believe that God is is leading me to this passage because it fits so perfectly with what Chad has just spoken on about Moses being in the wilderness and coming before the face of God. And it's from Exodus chapter 33, uh, verses 15 through 19. So God has just met with Moses and he has said, I will be with you. And Moses says, are you sure? And God says, yes, I will be with you. And Moses says, are you really sure? And God says, yes, I will be with you. I will go with you in the wilderness. And so in Exodus thirty-three fifteen, then Moses said, 
if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and on your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all the other people on earth. And the Lord replied to Moses, I will indeed do what you have asked, for I look favorably on you, and I know you by name. And Moses responded, Then show me your glorious presence. The Lord replied, I will make all my goodness pass before you, and I will call out my name, Yahweh, before you. For I will show mercy to anyone I choose, and I will show compassion to anyone I choose. So God puts Moses in the cleft of the rock and he covers him with his hand and he allows his goodness to pass by and he declares his covenant name over him. And what I find fascinating about this encounter is that when Moses asked God, show me your glory, he was asking for proof of God's presence. Prove that you will be with me. Because if I can't see you, If I don't know what you look like, how will I recognize you? How will I know that you are with me if I can't see your face? Show me who you are so that I can trust you. And God says, the glory that you're looking for is my goodness to you. And my presence is with you, wrapped up in my name, Yahweh. And those are enough for you. So when we say Yahweh, we think of that statement, I am that I am. Just a very cold statement of existence. But that is not what the Hebrew is communicating. It's a a continuous phrase. I will be the one who will be. Um, And I remember theologian Leonard Sweet teaching that the most compelling translation that he had ever heard for the name for God, Yahweh, was a Jewish one that said, I will be the one who will be there. When God speaks to Moses and Moses needs assurance that God will be with him, he gives him the name, his own name, I will be the one who will be there. So when no one else is, I will be there. And when you pass through the desert and the sea, Moses, I will be there. And when you face your enemies, I will be there. And he says that to us today. He's saying to you, I will be there. I have drawn near to you. And you have seen my glory in the face of my son, Jesus. And you have seen my glory in my goodness to you. And I declare my name to you that I will be the one, the only one, who will forever be there. And so the God who has drawn near to us as Emmanuel, the God who is with us, invites us today to draw near to him through his broken body and through his spilled blood of his son. His son Jesus, the ever-present one, calling out to us to draw near to him because he wants to prove to us that he is good. His nearness is our good, as we sang today. And he declares his name over us, the one who is and always will be there. So the body of Emmanuel is broken for you. And the blood of Emmanuel is shed for you, the God who is with us. So take these elements um, and remember that he is always with you. So let's pause and pray and celebrate that God is with us. We do thank you, Lord that you have proven your presence with us by breaking your body and by spilling your blood so that we could draw near to you, so that we can forever be with you. 
Help us, God, to draw near, not in fear, not waiting for punishment, not waiting for that big red F that says we're failing at life or we're failing at quarantine or we're failing at whatever, but God, that you hold our faces in your hands and you say, I promise by my very name, I will be the one who will be there. In Christ, we have received the fullness of God living within us, never to be torn apart. And we thank you and we praise you. And we take these elements in remembrance of that promise. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you, Julie. Uh, Just an amazing morning thinking of how... uh, God is with us, how God is present with us. We just have a few announcements before we dismiss uh, you to stay in your living room and just turn off the computer or whatever it is that you're doing. But uh, just a reminder, this whole morning has been God is with us is the reminder. And yet, uh, I don't know about you, but throughout my week, it is harder and harder and harder to remember that. And so uh, I'm super excited. We've been doing... um, uh, or pursuing an event called Alpha. It's just an opportunity for people from any background, whether you've been in church your whole life, you have uh, never heard, you know, sat through a church service. Uh, but this is an opportunity for us to get together and just talk through uh, the questions that we're all having right now. And so whether you call yourself a believer and yet you're experiencing doubt, this is a great chance to be uh, honest and open with some of those real questions. If you don't identify with Christians, and uh, but yet things are looking shaky and you're wondering what is going on, the big question that we want to ask together is where is God in all of this? If what we've just spent the last hour talking about is it all true, then uh, where is God showing up here? So I encourage you to join us if that is at all something that you're interested in or something that uh, you've been wrestling with some with some friends. Invite others to come join us virtually. Um, you can find that information at fellowshipjonesboro.com, and we are doing hosting those at 7 p.m. on Sunday. So uh, we'll be doing that tonight. So again, 7 p.m. Uh, fellowshipjonesboro.com. You can find the Alpha gathering tonight. Uh, just want to encourage uh, Fellowship family to continue um, gathering vir- virtually in your small groups, whether that's uh, larger as a GC through Zoom or whatever. Or I know there's several uh, really powerful chain texts that are going on right now through just smaller uh, little triads and so just this is no time to assume that everyone's okay or assume that people don't need a a a check-in uh let's assume that they do and so one of the rules of thumbs that i'm trying to abide by is if someone's popping up in my head you know if i'm just going about my day and someone pops in my head it's probably not by mistake. Uh, that could just be God's grace encouraging me to reach out to a brother and sister. So uh, don't hesitate to reach out, say hello. Uh, that stuff goes farther than you can imagine. And then uh, finally, I just want to let you all know, tomorrow is uh, our governor's kind of announcement for what the plan is supposed to look like for houses of worship. And so just want to tell you guys that as a leadership team, we are Uh, really leaning in, paying attention to what our officials are uh, suggesting and recommending, really paying attention to the different medical professionals and and, uh, political professionals that are um, just helping us guide through this. And so all that to say, uh, we are listening, we are uh, praying hard, and we are talking a lot, trying to figure out what this is supposed to look like. And so uh, one of the things that would help us greatly is we are going to send out a questionnaire uh, to our church family. And if you would be on the lookout for that, we would just love the chance to hear from you and uh, see, you know, just gauge everyone's uh, uh, comfort level, see see what everyone's thinking. But as a leadership team, helpful for us to hear from you as we are looking to move forward. So things will look different, I can assure you of that. Um, But it does look like uh, things are at least going to look a little more together than they do right now from your, you know, four-inch screen. So uh, anyway, we love you guys. We look forward to seeing you again soon. And then uh, we are going to go into our benediction, and we will be dismissed. So 
May we, the church, go out and be to our city people who love others as our highest calling. May we break down barriers of division because all people matter to God. May we trust his grace in our lives and freely give it to others, for it's only through grace we can change. May we use the gifts and skills God has given us to magnify his beauty and wonder in our church and our city. And may we live as a part of God's story as his gospel is making all things new. All right, y'all have a great Sunday and uh, a great week.